In my last video, I tried to remake Getting Over It, the hardest game ever created in VR. And oh boy, I had no idea it would be such a huge success. With a post from one of the most prestigious game dev news articles, and an approval from Bennett Foley, the developer of the original game himself, the bar was set high, so for the past few months, I decided to work really hard to turn this weird buggy game dev abomination into a real game for you guys to play. But at this point, with the main gameplay already implemented, it was time to design the whole level from scratch. So what does it take to make my own level? Can I keep it as frustrating and challenging as the original? Let's find out! So you see, in getting over it, the whole game is built around clamping your way to the top and falling like a dumbass the single moment you make a mistake. Are you serious? But in VR, falling is the number one rule of thing you should not do because it's pretty sickening. So I had to find another way, but how? I present to you my beautiful testing scene, I did some work playing with different platforms and I think I finally found something interesting so hear me out. Instead of climbing higher and higher, what if we were going up something like a river? This means that if you fall, instead of falling down, you get carried away by the current. Now this had two benefits. First it's a bit less dizzy, then it gives some nice moment where you can kind of save yourself if you fall by reaching another platform, which is pretty nice if you don't want to restart from the beginning. So with this idea in mind, I started experimenting with the limit of my game, how far I could go, how high I could jump, and in a matter of taking on and off my VR headset to end up looking like this, I had a basic understanding of what I wanted to use in the game. Wall jumping. Really cool feeling to do, and combined with some speed, you can jump even higher, but if you put two walls side to side, this is where it gets even more interesting. <gasps> Moving platform. I had to learn the hard way how disorienting it was to stay on a moving platform, so instead I experimented with not moving but disappearing platform which kind of forces you to still time your jump but is less dizzy for the player. Precise climbing. Sometimes it's better to not have some speed but keep things as slow as possible and I think it's the case with this type of platform which can punish the player if you want to go too fast. But doing all these tests got me completely lost, I'm not gonna lie. For example, I tried having two armors for the player instead of one, which basically felt like playing Gorilla Attack with giant arms. Maybe I will include it as a fun mod for the game later on. But for now, it was some time blocking the player when each end was touching the same platform. Oh no, step game, I'm stuck! So, do you guys remember the procedural slide we made in last video? Well, I thought it could be a good idea to recycle that thing to make our river. So, I made it a bit larger, removed the border, and got started on making a nice water shader. Okay, so how do you make a water shader in Unity? You start with a blue transparent color, okay, right? Use some depths to better fade the material with the shoreline, perfect. Then, add a normal map that looked like this, and offset it over time to make some moving wave. Do the same, but this time with a foam texture, add some smoothness to better reflect the lighting, use a depth color, a distant fade, sacrifice your firstborn child to Saturn, animate the vertex of the plane using a foam map for realistic wave formation, don't forget to subscribe to Valem YouTube channel and like this video, of course add acoustic map, optimize everything to make it VR friendly, go to the asset store, search if there is a free water shader available even if it's way too late, download it anyway just to see how it compare and finally use this last one. And just like this, you have yourself a nice looking water shader for your game, congratulations! Now that I knew what I wanted my game to look like, and with a basic understanding of the platform I could use, it was time to build my level. So this is not the first time I'm building a level for a VR game, but this time everything was different. Because what lies behind the apparent simplicity of all rage game is a secret that I needed to understand to do this right. And this secret is the triple F rule. Frustration, fun, and for prize. <laughs> but you didn't see that last one coming. We all know the first one of course, a rage game needs to have a steep difficulty to make the game always challenging and force the player to always improve until he can overcome the obstacle he's facing and get that same feeling of joy you have when plugging a USB on the first try. But to better balance frustration and engagement, that's where the second F comes into action, the fun. Whether it's an absurd narration, a nod element, or a dumb joke, this is the fun that can keep the player engaged. But of course, the last one is the less known, the cherry on the cake, what brings everything together, the surprise. Whether it's with something weird that the player did not expect it, or a trap that will make him rage even more, this is the one thing that separates the not so bad and the very bad rage game. Of course, 
that is all theory. Half of the time, I have no idea what I'm doing. I had now all the ingredients necessary to build my level, and in the end, it went like this. One eternity later. Now, I know what you think. But Volem, where is the beautiful game that you promised us a minute ago? And to that, I can answer that beauty is an abstract subject. The real beauty is on the inside. And yes, this looks like sh**. <laughs> But there is a good reason for it and it's called blocking. So blocking is a technique used everywhere in game development. The idea is to create a first draft of what your level will look like. To make sure everything is okay with the level design before actually doing the heavy work of making it look good. And of course saving you a lot of time in the process which is always nice to have at this point. But with this draft I can already give you a glimpse of what is going on. So spoiler alert if you don't want to know what the level will look like and keep it a full surprise for when you will play the game, I will recommend you to stop watching this video at this point, but of course, before you do, you can click on that subscribe button. I'm trying to reach 100,000 subs in 2023 and only you can make this happen. Okay, right, so the game will be divided in five parts. First, we start by what I call the beginner zone. Basically, a series of obstacles for the player to get familiar with the game mechanism. But don't get fooled by its name. I can guarantee you that a lot of people will have a hard time going over these and might even never see what is after. But once you get past it, you reach what I can already say is my favorite part of this whole level, the waterfall. Look at this. This is going to be gorgeous. You can kind of see the path you will need to take and with this huge mountain behind, I just love how it looks. But this part is a bit trickier than the previous one because if you fall, you get carried away by the water to end up right back at the beginning. Of course, I try to use what I learned to make this waterfall part. We have wall jumping, precise climbing and some platform placed barely out of reach to give you our time. And for the rare people who will eventually get over it, you will reach a dark and scary place made to challenge the most hardcore gamer among you, the cave. No, I don't want to dwell too much about it, but there is a basic rule that I try to achieve on all platforms. What I call I risk, I reward. For example, if a platform could make you lose a lot of progress when you miss, I try to make them a bit easier to go through. And on the opposite, if something is really hard, it usually don't punish you too much. In my mind, it felt like a fair trade. I even tried to push that idea even further by making the player choose at one point between two paths. One easy, but a bit longer, and the other really hard but short. This way, I hope to challenge some of you guys to try to finish the game as fast as possible, cause yes, I can already say that I will make a mod for the people who want to speedrun it. Well guys, it's been already 3 months since my last video. I wish I could show you more in this one. There is so much more left to do like finishing the scene, adding props and funny elements, make a starting menu, do the sound design, add collectible rewards and of course release the game on Steam. Right now it feels like I'm at the foot of a huge mountain but maybe the hardest game is to actually finish making the game. So if I want to reach the top of the mountain, I need to be perseverant and stop rage quitting. And you guys can help me. I will need some beta tester in a few weeks to give me some feedbacks about the game. So if you guys want to give a hand, go to my Twitter, link in the description and message me directly there with I smell something fishy. Of course, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to not miss when the next one will be there. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.